Good afternoon, everyone. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome all on behalf of the Commerce Association, Department of Commerce, Shahid Bhagat Singh College. We have clubbed us together on a digital platform for a second webinar by the on discovering resources using Scopus Citation Analysis Tool Part 2. The Commerce Association extends heartiest welcome to our Honorable Principal, Dr. Anil Sardana, Teacher in Charge, Dr. Kalpana Gupta, our Convener and Social Moderator, Ms. R.P. Saini, and our very eminent speaker, Dr. Pooja Anand Pulati. Before we begin with the webinar, we would like to request our Honorable Principal Sir, Dr. Anil Sardana, to share his vision. Uh, your webinar has been very successful. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity, sir. Yes. And that is why we had the version 2. And, uh, similar things done by uh, Dr. Poonam Sharma also. And she's here. I can see her name. Yes. And um, she has started and taken the initiative by other departments, Department of Haritkram and uh, Commerce Department under the leadership of uh, Dr. Gupta and uh, Aarti has very rightly taken initiative of starting a, you know, a kind of in, 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 this initiative will go a long way because uh, I believe that rest in sharing the knowledge and acquiring the knowledge also through webinars because um, uh, the physical challenges, the challenges of distances will be taken by because it is not necessary that the knowledge you need to have to get the knowledge you need to have the person in the stage, in the stage is beautified and thousand and lakhs of rupees are spent rather i believe that the knowledge travels from one place to another place only on the intent of the person who is a seeker who wants to seek the knowledge and who wants to upgrade uh, himself or herself I compliment all the participants who have come today and had come on that day also, because I believe that the time has come when this will definitely prevail, publish or perish. And nobody wants to perish. If you want to publish, you have to publish a good quality in good quality journals and a good quality material, because only the quality will sustain. All other things will uh, get churned out and happy that in our college we have people working in quality work. Uh, if I start naming, there will be many. So I choose not to name them, but I'm definitely happy. And now there should be a kind of healthy competition among the producers and uh, creators of material so that the, it can be shared with the world at large. The time come when the rating of the institution is judged by all these performances and all these contributions. Gulati also to write down whatever she has explained in the last webinar and what she is going to talk about today and plus supplement it and create a kind of small, very small ebook, very small ebook and uh, that will be beneficial for the world at large. Whatever the expensive will come, I uh, offered last time also. That that's not a big thing, and with these words, I do not want to come in between. I compliment uh, Arti. Arti has really done remarkable jobs, and a lot more we are expecting from you, Arti, and the uh, the collaboration with the new teacher in charge, uh, as well as under the leadership of present teacher in charge, Dr. Kalpana Gupta. I just wish to share with uh, you that uh, our college is a very good college in terms. Of uh, you know, uh, following the university, uh, we have finished our internal assessment work. Our examination forms have been submitted, 99%. Now we are going to start with the profile building of students. It's a different kind of uh, program which we are working on that. I will need the help of different teacher in charge as well as teachers to the principle is the same which I said one year before, student connect program. But I didn't know that Corona will make it compulsory for us to do that. So without uh, speaking much about other things, I once again congratulate Dr. Putan and Gulati and uh, good, it's a good initiative. And I look forward to more, it's not necessary that 
um, anyone can uh, come forward. Ankita can uh, start a, um, a webinar series. Uh, Ila can start. Uh, Chani can start. Or uh, anybody can start. We have um, something, uh, you know, unfortunate in the department. There is some uh, colleagues as fathers has expired because of Corona. We are sad because of that. I insist. But at the same time, we can't deliver this good work, and God will rest them in, in, in peace. So I once again do not come uh, in between. Please carry on, and uh, my compliments and my best wishes to all the, and uh, all the uh, people who are giving the knowledge to the world at last. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. I would now like to request our esteemed teacher in charge, Dr. Kalpana Gupta, to address the gathering. Uh, our principal, Dr. Anil Sadana, the speaker of the today, uh, Dr. Pooja Anand Gulati, uh, Ms. Arte Saini, the convener of the Commerce Association, and my dear friends, I welcome you all to the, the webinar on Discovering Resources Using Scopus Citation Analysis Tool Part, part 2. The part 1 was held on 27th of May by Dr. Pooja Anand Gulati, and that part was appreciated by all very much and because of that we are continuing with the second part and I think it will also be very informative and useful to all of all of you. So I welcome Dr. Pooja Anand Gulati and hand over the mic to her. Thank you. Thank you so much ma'am for your kind words. Let me now introduce you all to our speaker Dr. Pooja Anand Gulati. Dr. Pooja, faculty, Shahid Bhagat Singh College is a doctorate holder in library and information science. She has an experience of 20 years working with highly esteemed and regarding institutions such as UNICEF, British Council, Delhi. Along with being responsible for successful implementation of library automation and modernization projects of college library, she is also credited with organizing a national level seminar on the theme Building Digital India. Also, she is strongly admired for initiating the digital information management course under the ages of Center for Skill Development of the College. Before we log in, I request you all to refrain from using microphone and video during the webinar. Also note that we, have, we will be having a question and answer session after the lecture. Please share your queries in chat box. I would now request Dr. Pooja Anand Gulati to share her insights on the topic. Uh, am I audible to all of you? Uh, Dhruv, please let me know. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Okay. Very good afternoon to all of you. Let me begin by expressing my sincere gratitude for giving me this opportunity again to interact and further discuss about this pertinent resource discovery and impact discovery tool that is Scoopers. I'm really thankful to our principal, Dr. Anil Sardana, formers in charge, Dr. Kalpana Gupta, and my dear friend who is formers. Uh, association convener, Ms. Aarti Saini, for providing me this platform again. It is quite encouraging for me. So with this feeling of gratitude, please permit me to start my today's session. Uh, I'll be presenting my PPT and would be asking you whether it is. The text of the PPT is uh, legible to all of you? Dhruv, is it legible? No, ma'am, we cannot see your screen. Okay, let me do that. Just give me a moment. Let me be comfortable with it. Let me start my screen sharing. Are you able to see my desktop? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And now you are able to see my PPT better? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, hope all of you are doing well. Uh, now let me start with my present uh, presentation.
Could you please unmute yourself? Yeah. Yes. Uh, am I audible, please? Yes, please, sir. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Hope all of you are doing fine. And once again, a big thanks to all the participants for providing me this platform again. I am really feel honored. It's a great encouragement for me. Thanks for giving this kind of encouragement to me. With this uh, feeling of gratitude, please let me uh, begin my today's presentation. What we were discussing last time. Last time we were discussing that we are living in the realm of knowledge economy, which is purely research driven. And how does research begin? Research basically starts with studying of related literature. And when we are saying that it starts with studying of related literature, that process starts with discovering and finding the related literature. So when we are trying to find out the related literature, we are deeply concerned about the quality of that uh, related literature. So there are various parameters on the basis of which the quality of literature is being measured. One of the parameters which we have been talking and listening for so long is peer-reviewed literature. What is this peer-reviewed literature? Peer-reviewed is a fine line between information and knowledge. Once a set of information is being reviewed by experts in that particular field, that information becomes peer-reviewed and it is considered qualitatively better than the regular kind of literature. So this is one of the parameters which is being used to measure the quality of literature. That is why everyone is emphasizing so much on peer-reviewed literature. Uh, there are many other parameters like who is the producer of this literature? Who is publishing that literature? Which institution or funding body is providing fund to this uh, literature? So all these factors are assessing the quality of literature. So why we are discussing this tool? We are discussing this tool because it has incorporated all these indexes. Many indexes, many metrics are being devised by universities and by experts to measure the quality of literature on the basis of these various parameters, which I have been telling about. The various parameters are on the basis of producer of the content, that is author, on the producers or on the basis of parameter who is publishing that, that is publisher, or which institution is affiliating that study, that is uh, what is the scholarly output of that institution. So there are parameters which are being devised uh, by various universities and that they, those parameters are being incorporated in this database. So that is a single access database, single access point with, with the help of which any researcher could pursue his actual research. And this pre-research period, this pre-research period is the most important period. Why I'm saying that it is the most important period? Because it is the foundation in process for carrying out your actual research. Once your foundation is sound, then you'll be able to build your building very well. So uh, that is why we have planned, we were discussing a few days back, Aarti and I, ki, what should we do? How, how, should I, how should we plan our series? That is why we have planned our series in a way that in first phase, we'll be deciding how this pre-research things, what are the pre-research requirements and what are the pertinent tools which can be used to equip us with quality resources and how can we manage these resources with the help of reference management. So these tools we'll be learning in our first phase and in our second series, we'll be learning about these, are, there are some guidelines. We have to work within those guidelines. There are some guidelines which are being laid down by UGC so that, so that to protect us from uh, falling into trap of any academic misconduct, we should do our work very carefully so that no plagiarism should occur unintentionally on our part. So in second uh, session, we'll be discussing about that. And in third series, we'll be discussing about after learning, okay, how should I collect material for conducting my actual research? What, is the, what should I do in my pre-research period? Okay, now I know these are the guidelines laid down by UGC, I should work within the ambit of these guidelines. And finally, we'll be learning how to translate all these learnings into an effective manuscript, which we'll be finally submitting to a publisher for getting it published. So in that third series, we'll be learning how to choose an effective title, how, what are the different parts of a manu manuscript, starting from introduction till the discussion part. 
how, how to write an introduction, abstract, what are the methodologies, how should we portray our methodology in the paper, how should we discuss our results and present our results and finally how should we conclude our paper by discussing it. So, and at, at the end of the paper, we are always producing references and bibliographies, bibliographies and the management of those things we'll be learning in this pre-session session. So this way, I and RP have planned that this way we'll be giving a complete package to our young researchers to carry out their actual research in a uh, meticulous manner, in a planned manner. So uh, with the B, this brief background, uh, let me just... Okay. Okay, now I have been telling you from the last session that these qualitative measures, these qualitative indexes, metrics are very, very important. Why I'm saying this, uh, our principal was also mentioning this because they play a major part in uh, determining the rank of your institution. Like recently, this QS World Top Universities ranking has come in June only, on 5th of June, this ranking has come. And this ranking is based on these six parameters. You can uh, read them. These are the six parameters on the basis of which the top universities are being ranked. And see, point number four, what does it say? Point number four says citations per faculty. It has got 20% weightage. It means 20% of your ranking depends upon your research output. And research output should be qualitative. Then only it will be able to produce citations. Okay. And then over here in red, I have written that 18 million recorded publications and 138, uh, 138 million recorded citations were considered before giving ranks to uh, uh, topmost institutions of the world. And uh, if we'll equate them, what are the parallel institutions in India which are ranking Indian bodies? The parallel institutions in India which are ranking Indian higher educational institutions are NAC and NIRF, National Institute of Rank and uh, NIRF. It has also come out with a, its ranking recently only, and it's, its ranking, I suppose, JNU is the topmost university. So, and now you will be surprised to know that NIRF gives 33% weightage, 33% weightage to research output. Though this top uh, body, which is a British company, uh, which is bringing out this publication every year, which would tell you which universities are topmost in, across the world, this is just giving 20%. But our own uh, uh, affiliation, our own ranking body, NIRF, is giving 33% importance. That is why all educational institutions across the world are emphasizing on the quality of literature. And they are emphasizing their faculty members to contribute quality, qualitative re research so that it should attract good number of citations. It should get published in good journals. And you should be able to gather funding from prominent institutions in whatever area you are pursuing your research. So this slide is just to give you an overview how important these metrics and uh, these Okay, uh, I'm sorry with the while handling my uh, PC. Sometimes I am missing. Uh, okay, then uh, these are the universities uh, which are being ranked. Uh, these are the Indian universities. So it's a sorry state that India is not able to grab even the top 100 positions across the world. Our institutions of national importance, these IITs, IIMs, and NITs, these are considered, these are termed as institutions of national importance. These institutions are of national importance are saving our face as IIT Bombay has secured 172nd position in this 2021 global rank ranking, followed by some of the IITs, and then Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. And our Delhi University has scored rank 474th globally. And it is, uh, Delhi University is number seven in India. Okay. This is just to give you an idea that these metrics play an important role. So uh, I have been mentioning this again and again, that this is the single tool on which most of the researchers are relying. And there is a parallel to, there are just two tools which are widely being accepted for uh, retrieving these kinds of metrics. And these uh, two tools are Scopus and Web of Science. And we are uh, giving weightage to Scopus.
focus because of this wider coverage and that too in the field of social sciences. So these are the seven features which we discussed. We'll quickly run through them because we had covered them in our last session in detail. So just let us quickly run through them. What are the main features and functionalities of literature uh, our uh, scoopers? First, it would help us to explore the existing pool of information which is there in the academia, uh, in the uh, research output pool. And further, it would help us to analyze that result on the basis of seven parameters which we studied last time. Though, uh, when, and we'll be able to analyze those are search results on the basis of seven parameters. We'll be able to translate those uh, uh, results with the, uh, in two tables and charts and we can uh, reproduce those tables and charts in our literature survey while writing our literature survey in, a, in our article. So this is the primary function which we'll be able to do with the help of scoopers. Then we'll be also be able, if I'm pursuing research on a topic, uh, I will also be able to know what are the topmost funding bodies who are giving fund for promoting research project on this specific topic. So this is the second function. Third function, we'll be able to collaborate with prominent authors publishing the most in our stream and we'll be able to collaborate with them. And then uh, a research impact, uh, as I have been telling you, that we'll be able to uh, measure the research impact of journals, authors, even for the articles and even for the institutions with the help of the indexes which are being incorporated in scoopers. And today we'll be discussing those indexes uh, in uh, detail. Last time I, I just mentioned them superficially, the two indexes I mentioned, H-index and uh, impact factor. But there are some refined versions of these indexes which are being incorporated in scoopers. Today we'll learn about them and we'll see how does they, are, uh, how does they make a difference uh, when we are uh, using them. And then, uh, yes, one of the important thing which we can do with the help of the scoopers tool is that we can look at what are the active research areas. Active research areas means it's like these days, coronavirus. This is the one of the most active research area, which people are running after it and they are trying to find out a solution for this problem, which is uh, which we people are facing across the world. So, and a few days back, what was the buzz, buzz topic? What was the active research area? Uh, I think uh, in among diseases, it was cancer. Now coronavirus, has surpassed cancer also. And if I'll talk about sectors, sectors, which sector was uh, uh, well known and sought after sector? Information technology, followed by information and communication technologies. And now these days, even artificial intelligence, people are running after artificial intelligence. So these kind of areas, which are uh, sought after areas, they are being called active research areas. So when you will monitor the global research trends, you'll get to know, okay, these are the active areas where a lot of research is happening. Okay, and then uh, fifth factor is discover research performance of research, uh, uh, researchers with the help of citations and H-index. With this, I have already covered. And then you'll be able to identify journals. You'll be able to identify prominent institutions. You'll be able to see which institution is contributing the most in which subject area. So having said that, there is a small limitation about this uh, uh, scooper citation analysis tool. What is that? This is a purely abstract and citation database. It does not provide link to full text articles, but it gives you directions. It gives you directions that if you want to access the full text, this is the source from here you can access. And since it is not an individual subscription database, it's always a uh, institute has to subscribe it. So most of the institutions are not subscribing to a single database. Like if I am working in Delhi University, if I'll be accessing it, so it will direct me. You go to ProQuest, you go to Science Direct, you go to Springer to access the full text of this article. So it is quite possible that my university must be subscribing to those databases only. So accessing the full text of uh, articles is not a problem. And uh, having said that, when we are uh, in our pre-research period, we are more interested in scanning the literature. We'll filter out the relevant ones and then we'll be looking for uh, complete full text things because it is not practically feasible if 7,500 results have come. Would, we, would it be possible for us to see full text of all the 7,500 documents simultaneously? No. Let us first see and judge with the help of citations and abstract 
uh, and uh, other things, other parameters where it is published, which are the relevant words, ones which I should pick for my research. And then we may look for the full text of that document. So this is a, uh, 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 this is a limitation, sorry. Okay, and uh, what is the agenda uh, of today's session? Agenda is, uh, we'll be uh, covering, we'll be having a small demo of Scopus and we'll be looking upon some of the factors which we could not discuss last time, and but they are very important. Then uh, I'll be discussing some indexes which are incorporated in Scopus, but I could not discuss last time. And then uh, uh, again, I'll give you a quick run through, uh, through a dem demo of Scopus. And then finally, we'll be talking about Mendeley. What is Mendeley? Mendeley is known to us as a reference management tool, but it has got a lot of other functions also that also we'll be discussing and that also I'll be giving a demo of that. And why this reference management is uh, essential and this is also a way to promote your research that also we'll be discussing. So today we'll be... Uh, now, this, uh, I won't go into this. We have already covered this. Just to brush you up with this, the concept, I have kept this slide over here. We know what is Scopus. We know the coverage. And we also know that, uh, yes, over here I would uh, like to highlight. So whenever you are conducting uh, your uh, literature uh, survey, you're always referring to journal articles, followed by conference articles, standards, patents, theses. And very little proportion of your literature comprises of books. Why is it so? It is because of this fact, because these uh, journals and conference papers are the literature forms which are in primary form. They are producing content which is original in nature, which is original, primary, new. And these books are publishing, are replicating. The, the information which is already being produced, original information in books. So we are not referring to books that much. That is why you might be observing that most of the databases are concentrating on journals only because journals are primary sources of information that way where the original thing has been produced, where whatever research has been taken, like conferences are taking place. Con conferences also, we are discussing about the latest trends, latest aspects of that particular topic and then presenting our papers. So the, this, these are first-hand information. So we are always, when we are pursuing research, we are always uh, inclined towards first-hand information. Okay. And the, now uh, I have highlighted that social sciences just to uh, apprise you that uh, social sciences has got the largest contribution, this subject uh, in the uh, Scoopers database. Okay. Okay, now uh, this tool, uh, I have uh, uh, already uh, mentioned that there are seven functions and uh, in these seven functions, these research impact is one of the most important factor. That is why the, these uh, databases like Scoopers and Web of Science are also being considered by ranking bodies like NAT and NIRF. And this thing I have already mentioned that NIRF is giving 33% importance to uh, research output of an institution. and why I have mentioned ORCID over here again. Last time also we mentioned, but last time when I was uh, talking about ORCID, I was saying, Ki, please keep your name consistent everywhere. If like my name is Dr. Bhujanand Gulati, I should write it consistently, Dr. Bhujanand Gulati. Some, I should not write as Dr. Pooja A Gulati like this. I should not make variations. In the same manner, you, whenever you are writing your university's name, please write it in similar manner because it has been observed that Jamia Milia Islamia suffered, suffered its ranking because they were quoting their uh, institution's name in various manners. Sometimes they were, they were writing JMI, something Jamia Milia. Some, so you should remain consistent with your writing thing. If I'm writing Delhi University, so I should continue with it. But it is always advisable to write University of Delhi. So whenever you are writing your affiliation, be consistent in that also. And if you now you have published something and you cannot edit that, so you it is advisable to create your ORCID because if, once you'll create your ORCID, it would take care of your affiliation part also. And now these databases, 
whatever information they are indexing, they are giving an affiliation ID to each institution. Our institution, University of Delhi, even Shahid Bhagat Singh College has got an uh, ID. So whenever you're writing that, uh, it would uh, recognize it with the help of that ID. So this we have already discussed in detail. What new we'll be discussing today? See, last time we discussed impact factor. That is a generic index which is being used to measure the impact of a journal in a particular field of study. And how do we calculate that? We calculate that an impact factor is always being calculated for a period of two years. Okay, how do we do, do that? We will see how many articles are published in the preceding two years. We'll put that number of uh, articles in denominator, in denominator, okay? And the number of citations those articles have attracted, we'll put that number in numerator. Let me show that. Okay, the number of articles that the journal has produced in the preceding two years, that number will put in denominator and the number of citations it has attracted in the, against those articles, we'll put that in numerator. When we'll divide that number, whatever number would come, that is the impact factor of journal that we have already studied. What, uh, but what, uh, uh, what prompted institutions and uh, universities to devise other refined versions of impact factor? Why they are uh, devising other forms of impact factor? Reason being, we, as we were discussing last time, that impact, this impact factor, this generic impact factor is biased towards subjects, is biased towards fast moving subjects. And it is not justifiable with the subjects which are moving at slow pace. And the examples are given in this slide, like mathematics, engineering, and social sciences are considered slow moving subjects because the pace at which the research takes place and accordingly the volume of research which is being generated by in these subjects is less. When the volume is less, the citations would also be less. So you cannot compare the impact for factor of a mathematics journal with the impact factor of a medicine journal. For instance, if a medicine journal has got an impact factor of 10, and if you are, and it is possible that that is not the best journal in medicine. If, an, if a uh, medicine journal with impact factor 10 is there, you cannot say that this is one of the best because it has got the impact factor 10. Why I'm saying that? Because in medicine, the impact factor can go up to 23, 25, and in fact, even more. But in mathematics, the maximum number which, uh, which a best journal can attain is five. It means in mathematics, no journal can go beyond five impact factor. So can you say ki it, if I'm publishing in mathematics uh, journal, which has got an impact factor five, that is somewhere less than the medicine impact uh, factor uh, 10 or the highest impact factor? No, because the subjects are not comparable. So to overcome these biases, some refined versions of impact factors uh, are being devised. So today we'll be learning them. For journals, there are three kinds of impact factors which are being devised by different institutions and they are already there in Scoopers. Whenever you are visiting the uh, profile page of journal, you will see all these indexes and that the profile page would let you know as per this index, this uh, journal uh, position is there. As per this index, this journal position is there like that. Okay. So what are these research metrics? Uh, which I was telling for journal, three metrics are site score, source normalized per paper, and Schemago journal rank. Okay, and all these five, three for journals, the fourth one is for author. When I'm saying it is for author, it doesn't mean that it's always used for authors only. You can calculate H index of your respective department. Like in our college, eight departments are there. Every department can derive their H index. How they'll be doing that? They'll be uh, jotting down the number of articles being produced by that department. Then against each document, they'll be writing like this article number one produced by a department of commerce has got 20 citations, article number two till the last, they'll write how many citations. Wherever the at least number of titles would uh, be equal to the at least number of citations, that would be the H index of that respective department. So for H index, you need a set of uh, doc documents then only you will be a set of document and a set of citations against those document. Then only you will be able to come uh, arrive at H index. And this is also incorporated in our uh, scoopers. And then for articles, this also we did not discuss 
we we could not discuss last time that is for article how you would be uh, evaluating a, a particular article whether it is impactful whether i should pick it up and cite it in my document or not there is an index for an article also what 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 is the name of that index the name of that index is field weighted citation index now we'll discuss these two because h index we have already covered i have i have given you a, a slight thing for h index apart from individuals you can also calculate it for a respective department okay now let us move to uh, this site score site score is a, as i have been telling you the all these three three of them are improved versions uh, refined versions of the generic impact factor what are the improvements which are being incorporated in these the first one site score it is more comprehensive like the impact factor is always being calculated for journals but it is not taking into account conference papers though i am telling you that conference papers are also original in nature they are also of primary nature they also contain very pertinent information but how would you rate whether this conference paper is uh, effective impactful whether i should pick it up or not so site score would take care of that site score would enhance would broaden your uh, inclusion apart from journal it would also include proceedings papers conference proceedings papers so you would be able to compare uh, whether i should uh, pick up this journal paper or whether i should pick up this uh, conference paper which one is better because both of them would be carrying a index with them a number indicating that which which if the more the number the greater the impact and quality of that paper so this is the only difference then source normalized impact paper, paper i have been telling you that h index is all, also biased uh, h index uh, of um, authors working in science field uh, it will be obviously higher than the authors working in social sciences mathematics and other slow humanities field in the same way in fact factor we have been discussing it is also biased towards fast moving subjects so this factor so this index source normalized impact per paper would take care of those biases it would gives weightage to the citations based on the subject in which subject these citations are being uh, attracted so source normalized impact paper would overcome that drawback now third one skimago journal rank you just have to remember this thing that this skimago journal rank is related to the prestige or reputation of a journal or how would you uh, prestige or reputation of a journal means it would take into account quantity as well as quality of the citations now how you would say ki i whenever i will ask you ki whether this article is uh, good or not how would you, how would you rate it so the only thing which immediately come to your mind with okay i'll uh, assess it on the number of citations if a particular article has attracted more citations as compared to the another article it means the article having more number of citations is more impactful because more people have cited that no it is not necessary why that is why the skimago journal rank is taking into account number of citations as well as quality of citation because where that citation is being reproduced like if a citation has appeared in a uh, patent and a similar kind of citation has appeared in a regular literature piece of work which citation would you consider better i think i would consider the patent citation better because this patent citation has led to the creation of that patent and uh, uh, so quality of that citation is better if a citation has been produced in a government publication in an international body report un report world bank report so i would give weightage to that citation more compared to a regular kind of citation if a regular citation is there, there in any journal and if a citation on a similar topic is there in an international body report i would give more value to that citation so on the basis of where it is cited by whom it is cited the quality of the citation is if it is, is the same uh, same kind of citation is cited by an eminent person amartya sen is citing that so then you would obviously give more weightage to that okay, okay. Uh, he is not a regular person he is a prominent person so if he is citing this reference it must have got something relevant so this is this is the way how we we good we give 
importance to the quality of citations so these three metrics indexes measures all these are synonyms these three measures are being used for journals and they are all of them are there in scoopers this second uh, uh, measure is being developed by university of leiden netherlands and the third uh, metric is developed by schemago spain okay now yes journals we have covered the three metrics are there in scoopers we i'll be demonstrating them uh, through the, my live demo and now we have uh, come to the uh, article part which we could not discuss live last time and it is very very important because most of the time you are referring to documents and you really want to know whether this document is uh, impactful how good it is uh, in its research area so for that this metric this index is there this is called field weighted citation impact and it is based on a number which is called global world average and this number uh, this uh, who whosoever has devised this index they have given they have kept this global world average number at 1 they what does this one mean this one means it's an average number so whenever a uh, whenever you are picking an article if it's global world average is 1 it means it's an average article in that field when compared to the articles published in that field across the world and if its number is more than 1 it means that article quality is above than average when it would be compared with other other articles published in that stream across the world like i have given an example if a particular article has fwci 6 it means that article that particular article has received six times more citations as compared to an ordinary article in that particular field so uh, if it means ki an ordinary article uh, would be given number 1 and whatever if your article is uh, above uh, ordinary and average article then it must be uh, uh, scoring uh, world uh, uh, global world average more than 1 in that way so it would be rated in it would be move, it would be moving towards good better best and below average it means you really need to work upon that you are still in uh, poor or bad category you need to at least climb up up to average so this is the this index and you don't have to worry about their calculations you just you just want to worry about their their importance because their importance is contributing a lot and you just want to uh, know ki what are these metrics you just want to understand them the, the you 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 are not going to calculate them manually these uh, tools would be doing that on the basis of again i am quoting that these tools would be doing that on the basis of the content being indexed by them so it is quite possible that if uh, scoopers is producing a uh, an index number it might be some different from the a uh, number which is being produced by web of science because the content coverage is different but having said that the content which is being covered by both these databases is highly qualitatively highly qualitative reason being they have some uh, they have got a entire committee committee of subject experts which uh, they are continuously evaluating the content which is being indexed in their databases and whenever they are finding that their the content is not fitting into the parameters not qualifying the criteria parameters which are being set for the inclusion of a particular uh, article or particular uh, information source so they will disqualify that no now you are not qualified to get it indexed so now, uh, today i'll be showing you some of the journals are claiming that we uh, our journal is scoopers index so you please uh, publish your article with us don't get into that trap you first go to scoopers check whether it is true it is uh, scoopers index or not and sometimes what happens uh, some journals manage to get uh, their content included in scoopers and web of science but after some time they are not able to live up to the expectations of parameters which are being set by these databases that these are the minimum parameters if a literature source would qualify them then only we'll index them otherwise we'll disqualify them so you just go and do whether it is still there or it has been disqualified because it is a continuous process they are doing it half on a half yearly basis okay i hope i am not rushing 
so this we have already covered last time and i am assuming that the participants are similar are same uh, that is why i am not uh, further elaborating them this so we have already covered in length last time what is h index and uh, during my this so is very okay this again i would like to show you with the help of example because last time there was a question why uh, google scholar cannot be used uh, why you, you are advising super search index only see google scholar index which is being used for measuring the output of an author is called i10 index okay and you see th this is a prominent author this person is a very prominent person in the field of chemistry his name is c n r rao okay he he was with jnu i don't know where presently he is associated with so see his uh, scoopers h index is 133 c because he it belongs to a fast moving subject he belongs to a fast moving subject so his h index could go up to 133 and uh, parallelly if we are deriving i10 index from google scholar which is a parallel thing to h index it is 155 so that that kind of difference can come if you will derive your uh, i10 index from google scholar so it is always advisable why is it doing so because google scholar is duplicating things it it is taking into account uh, uh, google books database also though whenever you are calculating h index you are all the more excluding secondary sources of information and i, I have already told you these books are secondary source of information they are just replicating in the information which is which has already been generated by researchers and already been produced by researchers in journals and conference papers so the h index is being calculated on the basis of primary literature what is the what is research actually what is the meaning of research what is the purpose of research the purpose of research is that you need to add something new something new to the pool of knowledge unless and until you are not adding new dimension something new to the pool of knowledge you are not contributing anything if you are just compiling you are just collecting okay i am trying to study this problem and i have collected all the literature i am just compiling it and i am not adding any new aspect i am not uh, filling up the gap i am not looking at the ambiguities gray area where so what what i am contributing irrespective of the kind of research be it a small or a large one be it in a experimentative uh, uh, subject experimentative subject like sciences where you are experimenting and inventing something or in social sciences where you are not inventing something but you are uh, 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 you are putting your efforts time and mind into finding out the problem causes so you need to put something new to that problem uh, give a new dimension to that subject that is research now you need to add so google scholar is taking into account all those things which is basically not research sometimes uh, somebody because he is a prominent author some people are quoting him uh, in their uh, twitter account some uh, uh, students might be pursuing their phd under him so they they might be flaunting he i did my phd under so and so 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 in that case his name is appearing across the web many a times but that is not his research so research uh, if you are if you really want to judge a person on the basis of actual research so scoopers and web of science these are the, the last time many of the questions were coming that is why i have explained that with the help of an example now this i have already covered that there are two tools and there is a free tool also developed by microsoft uh, uh, publisher parish okay but again uh, we have uh, it is not advisable unless and until if some if you are submitting something and that journal itself is asking okay you provide us uh, your i10 index okay if that journal itself is asking you provide i10 index because it is all the more possible that your i10 would be higher than your h index but authenticity wise uh, if you really want to validate your work h index so the um, uh, national ranking bodies are always considering h index so last time i was also asked can you please show us how would be able to access it 
see it is a subscription based database no individual subscription institutions are subscribing to it and secondly it's a ip enabled database so once you are in your college premises or university premises you will be able to access that but because these days we are working from home during this lockdown all the universities have extended its remote access for that uh, i just know about delhi university how is it doing that so delhi university central library is sending an email to all of their faculty members and asking them to register with this website once you'll register with this due library informaticsglobal.com and log in and once you log in over there they will give you the, they will provide you your login id and password and when they you'll go to this website and you'll type your login and you'll uh, be able to see the complete list of e resources being subscribed by Uh, your particular university that is university of delhi and, and then the resources list is being given over there in the alphabetical order order and then you go to scopus this is the way how you will be able to access that uh, and this uh, this i'll be showing you through my uh, live path now now let us come to mendeley i think whatever and whatever new tools i have described uh, about scopus everything i'll be showing you through my live demo You don't worry, you don't have to worry about that and i'll uh, give, quickly run through the old things also so because rt this time has been very liberal in giving me a good time slot so i should not worry about time now so now this is a new concept i really want you to uh, pay attention on this so i has as like i have been mentioning that mendeley is known to us as a reference management tool but it does many other functions what are they it is it, it is a kind of social networking platform and you will be astonished to know that the kind of researchers which are registered with mendeley they are 9 million it means 90 lakhs 90 lakhs researchers 9 million researchers across the world are registered with mendeley with whom you can collaborate so it's an academic social network we are uh, uh, we are subscribing to many networks so it's a academic researchers network then uh, this so it's uh, as is a function of research uh, man uh, man reference management thing that you will be able to organize your and the beauty of this tool is that that when uh, earlier you were doing your literature search you were supposed to keep all the documents uh, in very safe manner you were supposed to and when whenever you are uh, citing them in your research paper whenever you are producing reference list or bibliography list from them you need to dig them out where i have kept them where i have kept them and sometimes uh, your computer is is malfunctioning and you are not able to access them you are saying oh my god uh, i am not able to access my computer hard disk is cr has crashed what should i do now you don't have to worry about all these things because whatever references you will add to this mendeley this mendeley will make a virtual library of that and would keep all those references on its cloud so you don't have to worry about your hardware let it get crashed you don't have to worry because your references are safe and sound with the cloud system of mendeley and the second beauty is that once you'll click the sync button so you will be able to access all the references which are saved and stored in your library from anywhere portability feature is there because if they are in the cloud you don't have to carry your pen drive or you don't have to carry your hard disk all the time okay came all my references are there let me just carry them no you just sync them if i am sitting in university of delhi then also i'll be able to access them if i am situated sitting in andaman and nicobar islands and then also i'll be able to access them so this is one of the this is the digital dividend which we are deriving out of these advanced digital technologies we are so fortunate that we are living in the era of digital technologies our senior researchers they used to work Hours and hours in libraries. They used to run from one library to another to get the to fetch the literature out of the libraries. But in these days, this all is not required thanks to this digital dividend of digital technologies. Or everything is just a click away, and everything you can save on cloud. You don't have to worry about anything. And the third part, which you don't have to worry about with this Mendeley tool, is that many a times you have been asked by a particular journal that this is our citation style. 
whenever you're writing your article, you are supposed to cite your uh, references within the text in this form. And at the end of the document, whenever you are giving your list, you have to give the citations in this form. You don't have to worry about that. You just save the bibliographic details. Bibliographic details means the what is the title, who is the author, where it is published, on which page it is published, in which year it is published. These are bibliographic details. Or in lay man, manner, you may say that is the address of the document. Like my address is I'm living in Dwarka and my uh, professional address is I am uh, working with Shaheed Bhagat Singh College. If, I, if somebody would like to locate me, they'll either locate me at my professional address or at my personal address. So if somebody would like to uh, locate the documents which are cited by you, how they would uh, locate them with the help of their address. And what is the address? The address is the bibliographic details. And there are standard forms which are being devised by different kinds of styles. You should write the address of your document address is not a right word i am just giving an example the right word is bibliographic details reference details so those reference details have to be specified in a particular format in a particular style so you will be surprised to know that mendeley has got more than 7500 styles more than 7500 styles in which you can produce your uh, references of bibliography and at the end of the document in the same way you can cite your reference within the text in whatever way you want to site okay and uh, on the uh, top of it one more thing which you will be able to do is that you can cite while writing you can cite while writing it means ki, uh, like i am writing and now i want to cite so you don't have to go to pick up that document for uh, find that folder you just open you when once you'll integrate your mendeley uh, into your word document you will be able to pick, access your uh, entire Mendeley library from there, from there itself, from your Word document only. And you just select and cite there. So you'll be able to cite there while writing only. So these are all the, some of the astonishing, some of the amazing features of this tool. And uh, one more amazing thing is that why we are, there are many other reference management tools which are there in market like End, EndNote. RefWorks. EndNote is also being incorporated in Scoopay. EndNotes, RefWorks. But why uh, most of the people, why it is most widely used mentally? Because it is free. Anybody can access it. It, it has got no subscription fees. And since we are using uh, Scoopers and it is uh, incorporated over there also. So whenever I am uh, searching Scoopers and I'm finding some relevant articles and I want to save them in my Mendeley li library for further citing them in my document. So the Mendeley uh, thing would come over there in your scoopers also, I would show that. So when the Mendeley thing would come, you just save them in your Mendeley library. It would, they would automatically come. So for that, you need to uh, download uh, Mendeley browser version. And for uh, while uh, citing while writing, you need to incorporate the word. I will tell you, these are very simple things, very straightforward things. It is a hardly 10 minutes job. But I want you to uh, clarify the concept of what amazing functions this Mendeley can do. Then uh, reference management, I think, I uh, yes. Uh, this though I have told that uh, you'll be able to insert citations and you'll be able to produce bibliographies in a particular format. And then you would be able to uh, read your document and highlight it. There is a feature with the help of you, which you will be able to read, read the document uh, uh, online. And if you want to uh, highlight it, you'll be able to highlight. And you, you can also give notes against that highlighted part. Giving notes means uh, you can give annotations. You can give, you know, annotations can add notes to that highlighted part and can share it with other peers, other researchers working in the same field. This is a way to enhance your work, to enhance your visibility, not your work, sorry, to enhance your visibility. And it has got a feature in which you can create groups also, private groups, private groups like I am, uh, I belong to some uh, subject and I would like to collaborate with other faculty members in my subject but I don't want to uh, make that group public so I will create a private group so five of us would keep on interacting with us so if you see I have access these and now I'm reading this these highlights I have given annotations please go through them and give notes to give comments observations I'll be able to do, do that and there are number of public groups which you can go and can refer to them Collaboration, I have already told, you'll be able to collaborate with 9 million researchers. Okay, 
and uh, having said that the one of the vital function which it is doing for, for which it is very famous is that reference management you don't have to worry about management of your references and why I'm, i am i just want to clarify why reference management is so important because this i have already covered research in two senses that which is adding something new original to the existing pool okay this is which is not just uh, uh, interpreting that this has all happened no interpretations you also add your new dimensions add a single drop but add something new to the research pool so why reference management is important one it would uh, protect you from plagiarism thing once you'll quote that you will you have built up your uh, uh, thoughts on the basis of these references you you acknowledge those thoughts so you are quite safe you will not come into the category of academic misconduct so references are quite important and uh, whosoever is studying the your article he'll be able to capture the preceding research pattern and findings and then he'll be able to establish linkages with the past knowledge okay currently this thing is happening like in corona virus case people are also studying about uh, the last virus which came i forgot sars SARS virus. They are also uh, uh, searching content SARS because they are uh, saying they are similar. So past knowledge and then con references add value and validate research. Like I was telling, if a reference has been has appeared in patent, and if uh, the it would it would be qualitatively considered high of high quality. So it would add value and validate research if you have included references of good uh, books. Uh, good international body reports so it would add value okay, she has gone through all these documents she has gone through all these good qualitative documents uh, that is why she has given this list so if it adds value it validates your research and they, they authenticate the cited work what whatever you are citing they are you are authenticated in the end see i have given references that is why references are so important so this i have already uh, covered uh, that it is a it would let you uh, build up your own virtual library and you that virtual library is completely portable then you will be able to uh, you label you will be able to interact on a social networking platform of researchers uh, amounting 9 million researchers and one of the very good feature is that you will get to know once you will give a keyword that see i am working on this like for instance, I'm working on coronavirus or on artificial intelligence or on digital technology, whatever. If I'll type the keyword over there, it would let me know which are the funding bodies who are promoting research on this particular body, on this particular topic, funding bodies across the world. And then that portal would let you know how many days are left to apply for this funding. If you really want to apply, you go and funding across the world and careers. If you want to switch over from one institution to another and that to other than your country, you'll be able to know the various kinds of job opportunities which are there across the world. So I'll show you everything. When you'll be experiencing them live, you'll understand the importance and vitality okay this i have already covered now we are going to experience have patience so i have covered the theoretical part uh, so how you will be going about it uh, if you can if you permit me can i have a sip of water yes now how you will be able to access Mendeley. First and foremost, you go to this site, www.mendeley.com. Create your account over there. Creation of an account is such an easy thing. You just need to give your ID and password the way you are creating your accounts on different kinds of forums. You just go and create your account. This is the first step. After creating your account, only after creation of your account, it would let you download the software. What is that software? Mendeley desktop software. If you want to access Mendeley website, then also you need to register. There are two things which I would be showing. 
one is mendeley website with the help of that mendeley website you will be able to know the funding opportunities you will be able to know the career opportunities you will be able to know about the uh, researchers across the world 9 million researchers but what this software would be doing this software would be exclusively working for reference management so first a create an account and then download this software is very essential download it uh, download uh, is very simple just go and download it would ask you for next next run and the thing will get saved on your desktop then once you'll download it you uh, you'll be able to open it and you'll be open to uh, you'll be able to create your own virtual library i will be telling you how you'll be able to do that okay and then once you will uh, create your uh, account secondly once you'll download the mendeley desktop what is the third step the third step is in the software there is a tools tab you install both ms word plugin and web importer why you are installing both of them ms word plugin you are installing because whenever you will be writing your article in word you will be able to cite your references by this word plug with the help of this word plugin and in the same manner if you are searching something from web browser like from scooper springer i triple e databases or any other databases if you have uh, inserted this web importer on your uh, browser and uh, like on i have downloaded it on on my google google chrome browser so you, every time that uh, icon would be there you will be able to save it uh, save those uh, references in your library so, uh, right away from there so now without uh, wasting our time further uh, give me a moment so that i should uh, switch to uh, mendeley first you want me to it is 112 yes let me show you mendeley first because mendeley we have not covered last time also scoopers so you can further do experimentation and if we'll be uh, having time i'll be discussing that also give me a moment Dhruv, my screen is visible, beta. Yes, my screen is visible. Uh, this Mendeley dot com is visible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Bachchan. So, uh, this is Mendeley dot com. Okay, uh, Dhruv, I want to minimize it. How should I do this? Okay, Dhruv, can I minimize this thing which is coming on the uh, right hand side, this panel? Uh, Minimize because it is obstructing my view. I have no idea about this. Okay, never mind. I'll manage. Uh, you just let me know whether in full screen this Mendeley screen is uh, visible or not. It is, na? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Bichu. So this is Mendeley screen. Okay. Now uh, I was telling you about funding thing. So I have already registered myself. So you will be. uh finding my name over here pooja okay and when uh, i have also install installed web uh, uh, ins uh web uh, plugin 
over here. So in my Google, you will be able to see the icon of this Mendeley in red color on my this uh, address bar near my address bar. This is there because I have installed that. Now uh, we'll just quickly run through what uh, we were talking about funding and all that. Okay. Let us go to funding. So uh, see uh, if I'll write. Uh, uh, see, uh, let me write coronavirus only. Okay. See. Okay. Uh, coronavirus. It is saying like this. Ki there is no. Uh, what should I write? Uh, digital marketing. Right. This is very beautiful feature. Once you, it will, it will get reflected on your screen. You'll see. See, uh, I, I have written digital marketing. So it is saying in digital uh, on this topic, one funding opportunity is there, and 95 days, 95 days are left to apply for this funding opportunity. And this funding opportunity is by this university, and then you can further explore it. What is this September 15th, the last day? This is, I, ha I have given a vague subject. Uh, depending upon, a, on the once I was searching, I was able to get good number of results for funding opportunities. Then over here, you can type the name like, and then you can further specify it. You can further refine it within your uh, narrow subject domain. Under what subject? Because all of the subjects these days are multidisciplinary in nature. Actually, whatever topic, you are choosing under which subject it falls, under which subject area you would like to pursue that research. So you filter that with the help of that. And then you see over here, it is showing uh, this, uh, if you want to get research for the purpose of your, uh, uh, you want to get fund, funding for the purpose of research and publications. So it is uh, the funding which is being displayed over here. It is for that purpose. For other purposes also, funding opportunities are there. Then with about, uh, if you are saying, ki, see, I am living in India. Okay. And uh, what, uh, in India, there is no opportunity on this specific topic. So this is the area. The left hand pain is the area where you can further refine your results. Digital marketing is not appealing me because it is not giving good number of results. Uh, let me write hmm. artificial intelligence. I should keep them in quotes so that this we have discussed last time and it applies universally. Whenever you are writing a two word phrase, you should enclose them within quotes so that computers should understand that it is a these two words should appear together. Oh my God. Thank God. I have chosen a good word. Uh, 65 because I was uh, mentioning this thing that active research area, you will be able to know uh, that these many bodies are giving uh, funding opportunities to researchers because this is the active research area after ICT artificial intelligence is gaining buzz. Now, 65 funding opportunities are there. So great. And actually I've changed my, this thing, uh, thank God. So uh, this, uh, this way you can browse which are these opportunities like over here it is showing and it is mentioning that is mid career and experience this kind of funding is for what kind of researchers at what stage they are in their career. They are mid career, uh, uh, freshers like that and how many days are left to apply for this funding opportunities. Then you can further because they are good number 65. So you just uh, want to further refine and you may refine them on the basis of these parameters like we did in scoopers. You can refine the, uh, them uh, on the basis of subject areas. Like if I am interested in arts and humanities, just three funding opportunities are there in arts and humanities. In agriculture and biological sciences, the four. Like this, it is showing. So artificial intelligence primarily belongs to computer science. So out of 65, 50 are falling under the subject area, computer science only. Okay, there are multidisciplinary other subjects also. It entirely depends upon you that in medicine also seven. 
why in medicine artificial intelligence is still a little higher number because robotic surgery you you must have heard about robotic surgery it is a uh, part of artificial intelligence only so social sciences to to funding opportunities so if you filter that these funding opportunities because they are not exclusively for you they are as per the subject so you you know your subject in under which subject you are studying that particular topic you just select that subject and then just go to those opportunities and you, you then then this is funding type this you will be able to refine it you want me to refine them okay let me do this uh, arts and humanities all this all in this category okay so three funding opportunities just three funding opportunities are there in the field of arts and humanities uh, they are there okay now i will be showing you quickly all other things funding types like if i'll write country of my okay my country let me see if this uh, no sorry countries funding type i have funding type yes you are uh, looking for this funding either to pursue a program or project or for pursuing a research or to write a publication so you can further define for a program and projects two two comes under this category two out of 65 and out of these 65 one kind of publication 65 sorry 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 three because we have filtered we have filtered initially 65 funding opportunities came we have filtered as per arts and humanities or social sciences and out of these three two are for towards programs and projects and one is towards research and publications and the country of citizen citizenship in india it is not there let it be then you amount or also you can refer ki what amount of uh, um, funding you are aspiring for you can type so if you are you don't want 500 dollar you are you are looking for a good uh, amount reasonable amount then you just find the it would just filter that for the amount you are asking these kinds of like see amount is also there amount up to 1 lakh 50 i think it is 1234 so it this much amount is there i am poor in maths whatever zeros are there then application deadline it is uh, giving you it is uh, the uh, those summary of the funding opportunities is highlighting everything it is highlighting which organ institution is funding how many days are left what is the amount which is uh, being funded everything is there okay and huge amounts are there you can say and you can further explore it i am just giving an example a feel of it and then it is you you want to filter your results on the basis of deadline no i don't i won't be able to submit it within 14 days i need more days so let me see what funding opportunities are there which have got a deadline more than 90 days so in this way you can explore it applicant application can type what kind of applicant you are you are mid career or whatever funder okay so uh, if you are uh, looking for a specific high profile funder you know about that in your field that this body is funding so you may search whether this body is funding something on this topic you if you know the name you will be able to like if i'll type c all the drop up menu has come if i type ki if any this body this is a reputed body internationally if i just want to see uh, anything this is funding on this so i'll let to I, i'll get to know okay after that this funding i think it is clear this is all about funding okay then uh, careers yes like it is showing uh, in which field you are as uh, looking for an in, uh, job where in what kind of institution you are looking for a job like if you go down it is showing you subject wise like in agriculture and biology that uh, th 13 uh, sorry 3920 job openings are there and these job openings are across the world in arts and humanities let us go to see okay, subject wise you can go social sciences and the number how many job openings are there the number is also displayed over there and all of them are hyperlinks so let me go to arts and humanities so lecturer in english which university is asking lecturer in english this subject then everything grade which grade is there which university is asking everything and you further with this uh, refine tools you can further refine your results 
and archaeology in arts and humanities again is a broad thing you can further filter it down to the particular uh, area in which you are uh, you are having expertise so accordingly you can do and then the job type job type it is showing which type job type you are asking ceo c then location where you want to get london there are openings in london there are low openings in southeast england scotland asia pacific where you want to um, go to gain uh, further enhance your experience salary band you are working at a particular salary band you obviously would want to go at a uh, better one on a better uh, grade uh, contract time you want to have a full time kind of uh, job part time contract recruiter type recruiter type means you would like to yes this is very important for us universities and colleges all of us are in higher educational institutions so obviously since we have been working for the last 20 years in educational institutions we'll find a job a apt job for us in universities and colleges only so we'll search for this like out of these uh, these would be uh, pertinent or apt suitable for me so 117 jobs are there so you will be able to uh, browse through them now see many things are there you can uh, like i was telling you in scoopers you can set an alert also once you log in yourself to this mendeley and you will say ki see i am looking i am interested in this kind of job and you just give me an alert over email whenever a new job opening is coming up so you will get an alert over email the way last time i was sharing you on scoopers that we we were searching for uh, corona virus and economies the impact of corona virus on economies and i was showing you that see we can put an alert also now for the last so many days since may 27 till today i have got two mail alerts kisi puja gulati its new documents have been added to scoopers index uh, pertaining to corona virus and if you are interested please go through them so you can set an alert over here you you will be receiving those alerts over email you don't have to go to mendeley again and again if you want to do that find a position uh, a position wise academic position all employers let us see what kind of employers are listed over here it is it is or uh, everything is crowd sourced over here this is crowd sourced over here to uh, 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 give you information on a single portal see these are the bodies which are providing or employment opportunities across the globe so this is all uh, how many employers are there is it giving number no it is not giving number ki how many employers are here never mind oh, and this funding uh, i have explained further whenever you will be going to site you can further experiment with it careers uh, i have given then uh, library then groups L let me just first tell you groups groups as i was mentioning that this this group i have created research network okay i am the owner of this group but i have created this group i have put this group on in the category of private i don't want everybody because it is every this mendeley is on cloud it is the server is uh, there on the cloud if i make it public whosoever is subscribing to mendeley or is attached to mendeley like i am mentioning 9 million researchers are attached to mendeley they'll be able to see my group and access my references and my uh, peers uh, uh, references also so i don't want that so i have created this creation of group is very very easy you just go i will be telling you you just go create a group that's all and then library see uh, though uh, we'll be using this library uh, dex uh, library uh, software uh, independently but i'm showing you ki from your web browser also also you will be able to see your library so uh, this way library looks like this uh, i i makes when when whenever you will be downloading your mendeley once it would get downloaded what would appear on your screen three uh, the screen would appear like this in this uh, uh, left hand panel you'll say the uh, uh, folders in this left hand panel you'll see the folders with the help of which you may organize all your references and where your where is your library which i was mentioning that you will be able to create a virtual library this central pane this central pane which is uh, visible to you to you this is my library 
this is my library and this central play, play pane is showing that i have saved these many documents this is the title of the document the topmost title which is there in my library is exploring covid 19 pandemic its impact to global aviation industry and the key strategy it is being written by these authors in and it is published in international journal of advanced science and technology in 2020 and the date uh, on which i have added this uh, reference to my library is 10th of june okay like this it has, so how many are there 1296 references on the bottom of the uh, bottom thing you you will be able to see ki uh, 50 uh, references at a time it is showing and how many in total are there in total there are 1296 1296 references till now i have added to my library and how i have added i'll be this this uh, this this i just want to give you a feel how does your mendeley library look like okay and when you will be uh, selecting any document see actually your screen whenever you'll open your mendeley thing your screen screen will basically divided gets divided into three parts okay the first part the left hand part is a folder part okay the middle part is the most important part and that is the widest part which would show you all the references which would display all the references which you have collected which you have collected so far and if you further want to know what kind of resources this or you want to make some changes in your resources you just go to it highlight it and if you click it like this like this this right hand panel will show you okay this article is the title of this article is this these are the authors this is being published in the very sought after prominent medical science journal lancet which is uh, last time we were seeing that this is the only journal followed by epw to which is contributing the most of the literature on coronavirus so uh, and the volume number of the journal these all are the address The, for references, what we'll be needing for references, whenever we'll be quoting this, we'll be needing which volume number, on which year, which issue number, on what, uh, on which page, uh, page numbers. This article has appeared. It has given everything. Then background of this is also given. You can go more to that. Okay, and likewise, likewise, DOI is also there. If you want to provide. a uh, digital object identifier along with your citation you can also do that it is also given over there issn number of uh, that uh, journal is also there and on which date you have access then fortunately full text of this, this document is also there okay so uh, full text i'll be showing you in that ki how you will be able to highlight and annotate annotations i was telling you know that i'll be telling you a little later so this is the three windows are there three windows are there in right hand panel you will be able to uh, gather the details of that document and the beauty of this is that you will be able to make changes in that and one tip which i would like to give is that see it is not a full text thing you like you see over here it's uh, this is pdf is there pdf is there pdf is there but others this pdf uh, thing is not coming why because this is not a database this is a library where you are saving your um, bibliographic details of documents so as to enable you to cite them whenever you will be writing your article but it is uh, an added advantage but whenever you are downloading something if the pdf is also coming along but all the time that pdf is not coming along but uh, never mind because for references you are not needing pdf pdf you have already accessed and read it from your uh, source thing you you just want to make a library of those references so as to cite them i i think i am able to communicate what i really want to communicate this this is a library for uh, keeping uh, for organizing for uh, recording your references and to make searches within your uh, uh, within your references like i have uh, saved 1296 references w would it be humanly possible for me to remember all the 1296 references no so i'll be able to search within my references on with this topic of with what reference i had saved let me see and if you want to save them separately in separate kind of folders so you may do that whatever you will add to your library that would get saved in your folder which is there in left hand panel recently added recently added whatever you'll add it would get a, it would be saved in your recently added folder but 
if you want to bifurcate them as per the topic say if i am working on four papers so i obviously i want to keep their uh, references uh, separately so i will be doing that by creating separate folders okay so this this is how your screen looks like when you'll open the mendeley software this is not mendeley software i'm just giving you a feel this is the web browser of mendeley mendeley.com why we have come over here because first i would like to give you a glimpse of that that from mendeley.com apart from this reference management what other things you may do groups you may do, create for collaboration like i have created for for giving you an example then careers you may search for a job and then funding this is the most beautiful and attractive part for any aspiring researcher like see subject wise also it is showing so uh, despite of writing like i was first i wrote that and then my second key term uh, was able to retrieve good number of results 65 or 64 you can directly go as per the subject that my research area falls broadly into this uh, subject so you search your funding opportunities in as per your subject and then it is again asking you see for social sciences it is showing 5165 funding opportunities now you can further refine them as per the uh, narrower area which is there in social sciences now i think i have explained enough of it and uh, now i should go to the software part this this is all which is there very simple pretty uh, straightforward uh, so we have uh, covered this uh, thing okay you want me to show this also let me see i was mentioning dhruv now delhi university screen is visible bachche yes ma'am okay so uh, like i was mentioning how you will be able to get remote access to e resources so once you will get that uh, email you will go to this web link du e library it's okay the window will get open username password login i was asked to show this that is that's why i'm showing it and then you will come to this uh, uh, subscribed resources list you just click it and it's an alphabetical list as i was telling you you will go to scoopers why i am going to scoopers i just want to show you how uh, mendeley is incorporated into scoopers and how you will be uh, able to import your documents into scoopers also directly from scoopers into mendeley like uh, i am taking very generic example all the time because this is the key thing which is getting highlighted all the time on media also so covid 19 then you uh, i i hope all of you uh, have got some hands on on this and must be uh, familiar with all the things which we discussed last night three bullion i am not going to repeat all of them because i am assuming the participants are similar okay covid 19 or corona virus or i am write, uh, writing because they both of our uh, both of them are used used interchangeably one and the same thing i just want to show you how i will be able to import my findings into my mendeley thing uh this time let me see aviation okay last time we uh, because it is in fact impacting everything this pandemic is affecting everything uh aviation this is one of the um, uh, very sensitively hit sector uh, uh you want me to use other things also okay there are advisories because of this uh, a trend of advisories every institution every uh body is issuing advisory you should do this like this you so let us write advisory and now this asterisk symbol i am using sorry okay asterisk symbol uh, it will take all the forms of the root word i am not going to explain it because we already did that so now 28 documents have come uh let me see Twenty-eight documents have come. Now, if I want to uh, save all these twenty-eight documents, they are not that big in number, and uh, all these to my Mendeley. When I'll open my Mendeley, you'll be able to see that I have picked up because I have incorporated it my in my web browser. See, 
if i'll not incorporate it in my web browser then it would not get reflected in scoopers also because though it is inbuilt in scoopers but for that you need to plug in plug in this web browser i'll tell you how so once you'll select it since you have already plugged in that web browser it is say save to mendeley save to mendeley means all these documents 28 documents would be saved in my mendeley library i'll show you that is why i have come to scoopers and when now i am there at scoopers because that uh, software part is very simple uh, if i'll be covering that in last you will be able to remember that when i am there in scoopers abas this is the only thing you will be doing you just select save to mendeley okay and you can create bibliography from here also you can create bibliography from here also plus i'll be showing you uh, how you'll be incorporating it in your word document let us see from here also up now it's asking you want to save it uh, uh, i would say i would i want to save it as a pdf and it would say if you you will be saving it in pdf all these uh, information uh, th uh, will be information will be covered okay save as pdf it is coming it's taking i think it has come sorry i did not notice uh, see see for all the documents my bibliography is ready see how how instant and how easy it is see my bibliography is ready and the kind i had already selected that is why it knows ki i have selected the style uh, ap i have selected i'll tell you everything you don't have to worry about that and now let me uh, keep this uh, uh, scoopers open only because i really want to touch upon two three important points about scoopers uh, let me tell them because otherwise i'll feel that i miss them this time also like yes i was mentioning one thing that uh, uh, if a journal is bragging that it is scoopers uh, indexed and you really want to cross check that you go to sources okay see 41154 results it means 41154 uh, journals are indexed in this uh, database and you can download this scoopers source list from here it would be it would get downloaded in excel format in excel format and it would let you know the whether that particular journal is actively associated with this or it uh, it is uh, not active disqualified see from here and it would show the period also i am not going to download it it's a very time consuming thing we are short of time so this is the only way if you want to see what all journals are being indexed by the scoopers you just download the scoopers source list and the, this would get downloaded in excel format and you will be able to know this is the name of the journal since gen since when sorry since when it is getting indexed in this scoopers database until when if it is being written to till 2017 it means scoopers has disqualified after 275 after now it is no more scoopers index journal so this is one of the thing which i forgot to uh, quote last time and one thing more which i would like to highlight i'll finish it in one two minutes because this too we have already covered everything we have you must have be remembering that affiliation we covered then we uh, uh, then we uh, were prompted with a beautiful charts see this institution is uh, producing content uh, in this subject highest followed by this for those beautiful charts are uh, importable you can import them and can produce them in your document then author wise we have always seen and the most uh, widely used uh, uh, window is document only because whenever you are uh, doing document thing what you are getting the entire information on that window again i would show you how see once your other author is already coming so no need to go to author you can see the profile from here source is also if you want to know about the safety science thing you can directly go from there okay so document is the most widely used window 
uh, for uh, author you are using if you are specifically using uh, uh, like i was mentioning in my example let me just go rao cnr a uh, chemical uh, chemistry uh, expert person scholar see his h index is 134 okay and uh, he he is still with jawaharlal nehru center for advanced scientific research so his h index is 134 and uh, how many documents uh, against his name 1 1663 and whereas that i10 index a google scholar was telling that his h index is 155 this also just wanted to show you and one thing more compare sources so that uh, you'll get to know sorry yes last time i covered it very superficially like i would like to compare two sources lancet again and again i am saying it is one of the sought after journal widely read journal in the field of medical sciences okay sorry actually my uh, laptop is new so it, i am not that friendly with this laptop okay now 15 uh, um, journals are there which have got this word lancet but i am looking for this lancet okay see now i really want to cover this point see now this is koi is showing site score which is a refined version of generic uh, impact factor then what this is showing uh, three metrics i was explaining na schemago which is representing the prestige and reputation of that journal okay and this is source normalized impact factor three indexes i will wanted to show then citations by year also so last time we did citation analysis of a document this this time we are going through citation analysis of a particular journal and we'll be comparing two journals see so for all the three metrics you'll be able to know what is the site score of this journal uh, site score number of this journal sgr number of this journal sn ip number and one thing which i would like to highlight over here is and i really want all of you to pay attention on this is that when so see if you have reached a stage that you want to publish in best of the best journals in your area and see you have uh, shortlisted either i will be publishing in lancet or i will be publishing in nature so how you would be uh, deciding in which i should publish you that the site score and all these three indexes apart from that you need to look at this thing also documents by year why you need to look at this thing also you i am telling you why because in 1996 how many documents are produced by lancet 2754 okay and in since 1996 now in 2020 46 documents the number of documents being published by lancet in a year in a year this is the year wise information okay like in this year 2012 1859 in 2012 total number of 1859 articles got published in lancet if i'll compare it with theek hai so number is on an average is more than see initially it was more than nearing 3000 nearing 2500 okay now they have reduced their number so but it is still more than 1500 okay now it's not working never mind if if uh, what what i am trying to highlight over here is like this then you whatever next journal you will be typing again you will be going on this window source document by year then you will seeing if for instance that uh, particular journal among which both the, the two you are comparing that is publishing just 500 articles in a year and how much this is publishing 2754 
that which other one the prominent one you are thinking of getting your article published in that that is publishing on an average 500 articles in a year but this is publishing on an average 1500 articles even in fact in some years more than that so three times the probability of getting your article published in a journal gets three times more in this journal because the number of documents published by this particular journal in a year is three times more than that journal though that journal is also very prominent in that in you in that particular field but this is a kind of parameter on the basis of which you can decide and can assess the probability where you you your article stands a good chance of getting published this is the thing which i missed last time and this is very important and the second thing these charts you, you will be able to uh, see the comparison with the help of charts as well as with the help of tables see if you are not comfortable in going through this 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 you see this information in tabular form okay 1996 this these many documents were produced in these year these many documents were produced okay this was the thing which as i was trying to share i think sources compare sources so you will go you will write the name of the title and last time someone was asking me is there any journal or international finance yes if you want to know that you just go to search search uh, this sources information type over there international finance all the journals would come and at a time you can make comparison with within 10 journals and those journals would be prop, uh, pop up over there these many journals are there on this uh, keyword which you have typed so this is the way to find out uh key on a particular topic whether a journal exists in this database or not uh, database or not and you can also compare them and this comparison if you do that by document by year you will get to know the probability of getting your article published and you will be able to assess and evaluate your decision on the basis of that apart from cite score and uh, other parameters and when you are comparing two sources we are assuming that you are comparing equal kind of sources because you have reached a stage when you want your uh, article to to get published in prominent high impact factor journals so obviously you will be comparing two high impact journals only you won't be comparing uh, a one less impact uh, journal with a high impact journal okay this is all about scoopers uh, which uh, i could not cover last time the three indexes i have shown yes uh, field weighted citation index uh, you want me to show because i am Okay. Field weighted citation index, like I have already told you, it would uh, global world uh, average. If it is more than one, it is considered more than average. If it is uh, that, uh, that is simply a number. Like I uh, like we access the H index of CNN or Rao, the one thirty four number was coming. That number would determine whether the uh, article is uh, qualitatively average, good, or towards a uh, bad or poor state. okay this is all about scoopers let us not spend more time on that now with this let me again stop share uh, let me please permit me to sh uh, stop it and now i'll be sharing my new screen that is of mendeley desktop give me a moment to share that Through my Mendeley desktop is uh, visible over there, Bichche. No problem. Okay, thank you, Bichche. So uh, uh, since I have downloaded it, I got myself registered in this. So that is why whenever I'll be opening my Mendeley desktop, as an icon of Mendeley desktop would rest over there in your downloads, or if you'll bring them on your desktop, the icon of Mendeley desktop would appear on your desktop. You just have to double click it. The moment you'll double click it. this window would get open which i was showing you to our web browser also three panes are there okay and now this thing would be empty for you when as a fresher this thing would be empty your library would be empty my library is not empty because i have already added some uh, articles in my uh, virtual library over here and now we would learn that this is th th these are the summary we i have been explaining it like authors authors given titles given year where it is published when it is added now i can sort them i can sort them 
sort, sorting in the sense it it would uh, like we learnt in scopus it would organize all my documents alphabetically these documents have got no authors so they have come on the top then alphabetically a to z uh, the author wise it has been sorted likewise you can sort it as per the title as per the year by default it was coming the uh, latest ones were coming at the top now uh, the it in reverse order it is coming like alphabetically where it is published i am able to sort as per the uh, publication date and over here now uh, okay now what does this green thing i am explaining everything one by one i have already explained all these panes how to sort them and then what does this green mean this green means i have added them in my library but i have not gone through them and if they are not green it means i have gone through them i have read them they, they they are unread okay and i can sort them as per as per the reading thing also ki if i want to see how many references i have added and how many of them i have not gone through you sort them sort them over here you'll be able to find okay and what is this star this star means you can mark some uh, some of the references as your favorite ones these are my favorite ones so this is how you can fiddle within your library and now you must be thinking what should i do you just tell me how to add documents in the library how this when because whenever you will be opening what you will be doing you will be going to mendeley.com first step second step you will be logging in you will be logging in with the help of your email id and password once you will uh, assign yourself register yourself with the mendeley website then you will download download desktop sorry mendeley desktop mendeley desktop you will download that icon would appear on your downloads then you drag it on your desktop once you will double click it this window would get open but this window this left pin would be there and this pin would be there and this right pin would be empty and this middle pin would be empty now the major task is and the only task simple task which you will be doing with this that add a document let me show you that how you will be adding a document in a mendeley library oh i'm sorry i uh, dhruv my screen is still visible or gone no ma'am it's gone Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Give me a moment. I'm doing that. Uh, now it's visible, but check. No, ma'am. Okay. Still not visible. Okay. Never mind. I'm doing that again. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now visible, Peter. Yes, I am visible now. Okay. Okay. uh because i want to drag something over here that is why i have i need to uh, contract my it was in full screen now so i was not able to drag so what i was uh, telling you like this thing is empty whenever you are starting a fresh so how you would be doing something like i have got a document over here i'll just drag it and drop it over here so again and again i am apology apologizing for this pack because this laptop i'm not that sorry because this is laptop i am very new to it it's an apple laptop just now i have started using it in a day or two only so uh, what you'll be doing it like these here the pdf documents are there like a simple thing whenever you are dragging over here there you just drag it and uh, place it over here in your like let me just try okay sorry i'm not able to because i am not that friendly with this uh, new keypad so you just need to if there are there on your desktop or if they are on your any of the folders you just drag them and keep it uh, keep it over here in this central plane they'll come automatically or alternatively you can add them from here add a file or add a folder okay and then you can further 
Uh, so I'm uh, never mind. So um, I I hope you or oh, this is very simple thing. You will be able to do that. Drag and drop. Then your library would be there. And whatever you will be added, it would be there in your uh, recently added thing. And then uh, you can further select all of them and can create new folders and can organize uh, your thing as for the uh, as for your uh, need okay then this is a for sorting we have we did sorting then we uh, how we'll be filtering our results we can filter them as for the, uh, the these authors tags keywords publications like uh, I just want to read uh, uh, my thing, which is being published in Journal of Travel Medicine. Okay, so the it would uh, filter my results out of my twelve hundred something whatever references I have added to my library. It would filter. So when you will play with them, you will get to know. And one thing which I would saying, which I was mentioning, that uh, uh, you will be. It is a portable thing. You can uh, access it from anywhere. To make it portable, you need to click this sync button sync button to make it portable remember you need to uh, click this sync, sync button then only your library will become portable and how you will be adding now that uh, the, now this thing is very simple how you will be adding references to your uh, thing you will be going to uh, wherever your documents are uh, there you just drag them in, or so, the way we are adding any document in anything add file folder the way you will be able to do that and if you are downloading something from a publisher's website like Scoopers, I have already shown that that uh, web importer icon would appear on your taskbar. You just select the things and those things will get saved on your uh, Mendeley library directly. They'll come over here. Like, okay, like uh, we were adding something uh, we have recently added something from Scoopers. Everything has come over here. Those 28 documents on tourism and something we were adding. Uh, so they have come. Now, now, uh, now uh, yes, one thing more. This thing I forgot to mention. Uh, th this I have already mentioned. This is what? See, when I press this arrow, my documents are sorted and the on the topmost thing what documents have come all the pdf documents have come like i was mentioning that this is a library it is not a database that all the references would come along with complete pdfs but if you want to see how many references are there uh, with their complete pdf you just have to press this uh, arrow button all the pdfs will come like this now this pdf uh, uh, now i want to read this pdf see I, i'll be able to read this pdf completely and if i want to highlight i was telling you now you can uh, uh, that uh, post your uh, just you just highlight and if you want to um, uh, give a note to it you just you know, add a note to it you have highlighted it with the help of this and then what note you uh, abstract whatever note i'm just giving you an example abstract okay and just now and where these notes would come notes would come further you can uh, from here you can access them okay and now you can change the colors and all that this you can do so yeah, if i'll be sharing this pdf with uh, my peers uh, who are also working on the same they will be able to see this document with all these annotations okay whenever they'll be giving in this right hand panel the uh, this highlighted uh, portion would appear to them and they will be able to see what notes uh, annotations i have assigned to that highlighted uh, portion okay now this is the main uh, menu bar. Now, this is the place, please. This is the only thing which you need to learn. The, the, just two things are there. It is pretty simple. Just two things you want, uh, you need to learn about Mendeley. 
one how to add documents and documents will be added either manually from your desktop or you will be downloading them from the websites both of the things i have shown now how you will be installing because i did that uh, for, for my mendeley uh, you the only th you will be going to this tools menu tools menu and then you will be because my thing is installed already installed it is saying uninstall you just need to say install ms word plugin you just need to uh, click install ms word plug plugin whenever you will uh, open your word document under references the icon of mendeley would appear and it would let you insert your citation while writing your document so this is the only thing you need to do go to do uh, tools and uh, say install ms word plugin and in the same way uh, for browser you go to tools and say install web uh, browser or web importer so it would say ask you for which uh, browser you are asking firefox google whichever chrome so whichever uh, browser you are using you select that browser and that would appear uh, so this is the only thing which you will be doing now uh, this is all about mendeley now uh, most of the things i have covered i think uh, sorting filtering and uh, annotations and in one 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 thing which i would like to show is that you can also perform literature search let me go to my library yes a literature search also you can do from here there there, there are the doc, there are the references which you have saved in your library but because i was mentioning that this entire information is on cloud so you will be able to access the related content also with the help of this literature search menu okay literature search i, I am not going to show it because you know how to search you just give a keyword and uh, you will be able to and from there you can uh see uh, the documents of your interest see i have created some documents pdf coronavirus search results uh, i have created some folders to organize my uh, references so this is all about mendeley now we will be going to word okay again i need to share my screen na dhruv Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, okay. I am doing that. Visible. It's visible, ma'am. Uh, Word document is visible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Great. Uh, so, so see over here. Uh, I did it last night for just uh, giving a feel to you. I I'll be explaining it. Okay. Now, uh, in this references, because I have incorporated that na, uh, Mendeley into. So. i have input so it is showing see it is showing over here insert citation merge citations if you are quoting uh, if you would like to cite two citations together you will be able to do that okay and styles it would uh, as i was telling you that it would let you uh, play with your citations in seven, more than 7500 styles and if and it depends upon what kind of uh, citation your particular journal is asking and how you will get to know that uh, this particular journal is following which citation style you will go to the authors guide abstract and indexing subset and over there you will find that this citation style is being followed by this journal 99% of times you will find this uh, over there if it is not there you can write to the editor of the journal that which citation style you are following and i am using mendeley for uh, preparing my bibliography and references just let me know what name with what name it is there they'll let you know and you can search that now let me do that like i now i will cite this is cite while write okay and now i'm just giving you an example and now uh, i want to cite let me open a fresh document because uh, in the night also when i was practicing it was giving some kind of problem uh let don't uh, say let me open a fresh word document okay 
okay uh, let me just this is site okay and references insert citation oh sorry 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 cancel sorry 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 this is let me just once again open it I was trying to install this Mendeley desktop on my old laptop only, but it was not getting installed. The reason it was saying that your uh, uh, window bit size is, uh, it should be itna. Maybe the memory, there was some issue with memory. That is why I switched to this laptop. Oh, thank God. So uh, below references, this insert citation is coming. I'm praying that it should work because uh, I was able to download this desktop version very uh, with so much of difficulty. Okay, now insert citation. Oh my God. I think, let me just see whether this is open. I am extremely sorry about this technical glitch. Let me see. Syncing part I did. The syncing is very important and it should be open. When you are citing your document in Word document, the desktop should be open. Uh, sorry, your Mendeley desktop should be open and it should be uh, in minimized mode. Okay. And now insert citation. I am so sorry about it. It's not working. But let me just let me just try once more. Please give me a chance because it is very simple and it is very beautiful. I really want to share it with you. It's because of some technical glitch. It's not happening when I was doing that. And that is why I have saved this document. Let me just uh, explain you with the help of this document. Because uh, with the help of this example, you'll... What I did when I, am, I was writing that, I just, so see, if I want to cite something over here, what I will do, I'll go over here, I'll say insert citation. And what it would do, it would open up a small window over here, which would show me my live open library. It would say me open library or it would give you a window kind of thing. Uh, and it would ask you to type a keyword or author's name or publisher of your reference. Once you will type that, it would uh, come over here as a citation. Like last night when I was doing it for you people, I did that and it picked it up. That is why it has come over here like this. But because of some technical glitch right now, I have tried, tried many a times. It is, I don't know why it is doing that. It's very bad of technology. Never mind. I'm extremely sorry about that, but it is very, very simple. I'm telling you the steps. You just need to plug in the word plugin. It, this has already been done. That is why this Mendeley is there. And now, whenever you, whatever you'll write, it, you'll go to that. And when you'll click this insert citation, it, a small kind of pop-up window would come. And it would ask you which reference you would like to see. You will, and the complete list will come alphabetical if you want to see. You can directly go to Mendeley also. If you'll open Mendeley, then Mendeley desktop would come. Mendeley desktop would come. From there, you can pick up and select. Just select. Go to that, select, click. This reference would come in whatever format, like I have selected APA format. This reference would come and wherever I want to cite, the similar manner I'll be citing. And at the end, wherever I'll be keeping my cursor and will be saying insert bibliography. Okay, it is here, insert bibliography. It would ask me in what format you would like to insert. So I think this document has got corrupted. It's have, nothing is happening. So just insert bibliography. So you will, uh, it would ask you in which format you at the point of cursor, whatever citations you have used within your text for all those citations, the complete reference list would come. And at the end of this, I would like to highlight that there is a slight difference between references and bibliography. Uh, in my earlier session also, I mentioned again, I would like to brush up that. So references, whatever things you are mentioning within the, your document, citing them, it means you are 
quoting, you are giving acknowledgement to those documents that I have referred to them while writing this content. So, and the listing is there uh, at the end of the document that is called reference list. But if you are naming that list as bibliography, that is no more a reference list. That means you have included not only those documents which are cited by you within that document, but also the related literature which you want your readers to go and study. But you yourself have not studied them, but you are giving them a broader idea that the, see these are also other documents which, which you may refer. So this is the uh, terminologically uh, difference between reference list and bibliography and uh, but over here this is saying bibliography insert bibliography it means if whenever you will be inserting bibliography whatever citations this is the only thing you need to do this is the only thing you need to do i hope i am uh, able to make it understand to you people but again i am getting it revised that you only go to mendeley site because mendeley is a super so we have been discussing since last session Again, I want to get it revised. You just go to Mendeley site, get yourself registered with it, download Mendeley desktop like this. Uh, 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 Dhruv, it is visible, na? No, ma'am, your desktop is visible only. Yeah, and desktop, Mendeley. desktop, yeah, I'm saying desktop only. So see, on this taskbar, Mendeley desktop is there. It looks like this. It has got three panes. Whatever documents you'll be adding, you'll be picking, oh, wow. Thank God. So, <laughs> you see, this way, uh, I'm learning Apple. So uh, this way, I think you will be able to, uh, so you just, uh, so if you'll permit, you see this, 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 this way. Okay. This way you'll just drag them and put them over here. It's, they are added. They are no more on your desktop. This way you'll build your library. And from uh, uh, website, I have already told you, just select the like, if you want to show me a Google thing, I, let me show you that. Uh, uh, but it is always advisable to download articles from uh, publisher's website. Don't download it from Google and other sites because it is quite possible that uh, on Google, the reference details are incomplete. If, for instance, if you are downloading some reference details of a journal and it, if, uh, Google is quoting that it is volume number so and so, but it is volume and issue number, uh, uh, it is wrongly quoting, quoted over there, then the, whenever somebody would be consulted your, consulting your document, they'll get to know, oh my God, references are being given so carelessly. So if you are uh, downloading the document which you want to, sorry. Uh, which you want to uh, in, in, uh, incorporate in your library, always advisable to download them from a reputed website and not from Google. Reputed website means uh, publisher's website. Like Google Scholar still would, is a reputed website. Like uh, you must be thinking that this is her favorite uh, topic. It is not, but uh, it is the Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so many documents have come. Now I would go to, now I, I would, I want to add them from this browser. That thing to I have shown you just simply diagonal. I will go to Mendeley. Uh, this is uh, actually this uh, something is coming over here. I'm not able to click my Mendeley. Okay, thank God. See, see, I click my web Mendeley web importer. Okay, now I'll sign in. This I'm doing for uh, saving the uh, reference details from a website. Okay. So it, 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 it is not asking for my login details because I've already, so they see. Up now it is saying ki which documents from these displayed documents, which are displayed over here on this uh, website, you want to save them in your Mendeley website. So uh, 12 ref references they have deducted on this particular page. Okay, so uh, and add PDFs if available. It is saying if PDFs are there, so add them. If I disable them, it would not add PDFs. But why would I disable them? I would like to have PDFs. So 
And if I would like to select all of them, I would select all of them. And now this ad is, is uh, enabled. You just add. That's it. It's so simple. So what I did, I went to this Google Mendeley uh, icon, which is there against the address bar. And uh, I signed in. And after signing in, automatically it gave me these uh, listing. Let's see the page which you are surfing. This has got so many references. You want to select all of them and you want to add PDFs also in your library. I said okay to all and then it is doing that. And if I want to view my library, I can view my library from here only. See, with the, these I have downloaded from my Google. So this is how I'll be building. See, he's saying the Google Scholar So the, the, this is how I will be building my library. Either I'll be saving it from my folders or I'll be uh, bringing the documents from uh, the respective websites. And from bringing them to respective websites, you don't have to download them. You save them, then bring them down to the desktop, then drag them. Directly do that by having this web importer. And web importer, how you will be doing that? You will be doing that by going to tools and install web, uh, web importer. And for uh, in, uh, incorporating these references while writing your article within the text and for producing the bibliography and references, you just need to uh, go to tools, install the word pl plugin, which I was showing you, but unfortunately it did not work. I'm extremely, extremely sorry about that. But my previous uh, laptop was not uh, uh, handling this Mendeley because of some memory issue. That is why I have switched to this. So, okay, this is our Mendeley library. This I'm closing and this way you will be able to, this Mendeley thing will go, go under references, this Mendeley would come, you, whatever you'll write. So uh, one last time I want to, let me just, because I'm seriously feeling guilty about it. Blank document. I'm seriously praying God ki I'll be able to show you. No, there is some problem. There is some problem. That is why it is uh, my Mendeley desktop is also open, but uh, but it, it was working. Somehow it's not working right away, but uh, it is so easy. It, when you'll say this kind of window would come, it would say open Mendeley and whatever will you just pick them up and whatever citation, then you come to cursor, insert bibliography. I think I am uh, over with my content and uh, now I can open the forum for any cl clarifications, observations, comments, or any queries if you people have. Or if you want to add something new to our next uh, lecture series, you please feel free to ask. May I now ask Aarti or Dhruv to kindly take over the session? Uh, thank you, Pooja, for such an enriching session. So yes, we have a few queries, and uh, I'm sure you will be able to uh, answer every query. So the first question comes from uh, Sadhana Jan. Uh, she asked, like, how to find out number of citation of a particular paper? Oh, that is very simple. Uh, when you will be typing uh, any keyword in document search in Scoopers, okay, then you will get the details. Okay, see, uh, on the topic on which you are searching, these are the uh, documents which are available in our Scoopers database. And then their details would come. Their details would come. This is the title. This is the author. So on their details, over there, sorting option is there. By default, that sorting would be as per the latest date. What is the latest date document? So you just go to that sorting window and click the drop, uh, drop down menu from there and click the site by highest. Site by highest. So the, all your documents would get cited, cited uh, sorted as for the number of citations. So the document having the maximum number of citations would come on the top. And, it, and against every document, the number of citations would be there. Like in first document, if the number of citations, number, highest number is 51, it would show that this document is having 51 citations. So now you'll be able to know, you'll, you'll be, get to know if this uh, document has got this much citations. Okay, uh, next question comes from Dr. Archer. Uh, she asked, that what is more beneficial? Is it published in the form of book or research paper? Uh, I, I see it is my personal thing. 
I would I would say research paper. And again, there are many parameters which we have been discussing that uh, it depends on uh, what kind of research paper it is that where it is being published. Okay, so if it is being published in a reputed journal and what kind of book you are referring to, whether that uh, uh, research uh, thesis which is being transformed into a book format, uh, uh, it depends upon many factors. But as I was uh, mentioning that you will always give priorities to journals and conference proceedings followed by all these things. But obviously patents would come above that. Patents, because government organizations have patented that. It means a good result a good outcome have uh, has come out of your research so patents the citations if are there and a patent document is there if you want to refer that is obviously uh, more qualitative than an article okay uh, mr sachin from central university haryana would like to know why web of science and scopus show different citation for the same article why do they differ oh, in the citation okay 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 this i have tried to cover c why they are showing different citations because the sources which they are index indexing are different i was mentioning that the con content co coverage in scopus is uh, bigger than web of science when their content coverage is uh, bigger when they are say for instance if scopus is i'm just giving an example scopus is indexing 100 sources and web of science is uh, indexing 60 sources so the number of citations scopus would be retrieving on the basis of citations appeared in those 100 sources and web of science would be retrieving the number of citations based from those 60 sources so obviously the because the it is, it is quite possible that in the remaining 40 sources, the citations would have appeared. That is why the number of citations are uh, varying, bigger in uh, Scoopers and in Web of Science. So because of the, uh, uh, because of the uh, variation in the number of sources being covered by both the databases. So H index, it applies to H index also. The H index may also vary. Okay, uh, next query from Nikita from uh, Sri Bhagat Singh College. She asks to avoid plagiarism. Can we copy the citations from the Google Scholar by using the cite function? Uh, this function gives the citation in a total five formats. Is this legitimate? Yes, it is also legitimate. It is uh, because what what they are doing. They they are also uh, letting you cite your citations uh, as per the authorized styles and there are many authorized styles and the, some of the commonly used are American Psychological Association style, APA, MLA, Modern Language Association style, Chicago. So it is uh, giving you a feature, an additional feature that you can let through. You can use that also. That is not a problem. But uh, Mendeley, I am advising because it is very comfortable that you once you'll incorporate it, plug in in your word, you will be able to. And the, one of the best things which Mendeley is doing is it is taking care of all your references on cloud. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to save them anywhere else. Okay, uh, uh, I'm sure we are able to uh, sort Vila Joshi's uh, query, which. Uh, uh, actually asked about how do we install web importer and uh, what is its relevance. So next question comes from uh, Deepika Swami. Uh, she asks, uh, in Scopus, can we download all issues of any particular journal? Uh, see, Scopus is not a full text database. It is a database which is providing you abstracts and citations. For, for and it would give you how many journals are indexed in this if you really want to access the full text articles of that particular journal then it would direct you if you really want to access this full text access, uh, it would direct you this from this side you will be able to access it okay uh, nitin wilson would like to know are the journal indexed by scopus have the same citation number i i'm not able to understand what is the question Okay, uh, uh, Okay. fine. Let's come to the next question. Uh, Nitin, they'll definitely answer your query. No, you just repeat. Let me okay, just I have to actually find the question in the uh, chat box again. So actually he asked about are the journal index by Scoopers have the same citation numbers? This was the question asked. So see, uh, as I have been mentioning for so long, uh, widely used, there are two citation based databases, Scoopers and uh, Web of Science. Uh, I don't think any other is there. So, if it, the, everything depends upon the kind of literature they are indexing, 
okay if i am keeping track of 10 things so i'll be able to uh, devise uh, at, uh, extract information on the basis of those 10 things only you know? so uh, it is it all depends on the kind of content the coverage of the content in these databases so uh, it, it it entirely depends upon their content from scoopers and web of science they may vary and these are the only two sources and the third one is google scholar for when, whenever you are retrieving any measure any index and metric through google scholar it would be high because i have explained it many a times why it would be high because they would take into account social networking sites as well as uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, e google uh, books database and one thing more i would like to add over here uh, that is plumx metric plumx index Uh, uh, we we have mentioned h index we have mentioned impact factor for defined forms of impact impact factor site score sjir snip so one thing i forgot to mention is plum x index plum x um, index takes to, into account the citations which ha, which are uh, uh, there on social networking platforms say on wikipedia say on facebook say on twitter so whenever you are getting cited on these uh, uh, platforms this is the index which would measure your uh, impact on these social media platforms if you want to assess an author uh, comprehensively in terms of its scholarly output as well as in terms of its social networking output then you can club his h index as well as so you can always have a look at its plum x matrix p l u m and then capital x this is social networking matrix fine let us take the uh, last query by sachin from central university he asked if howard style has been used but i would like to change with apa can we change the same yes 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 you can switch over to any style you want to switch over the moment you will uh, click to that style window it would uh, the drop uh, drop down menu would appear and all the styles would be listed over there alphabetically you select whichever you want to select if you are uh, presently uh, working with harvard you just select apa american science psychological association 7th edition style it would get uh, and, and you don't have to type anything you just select and your uh, bibliography will automatically gets transformed into that style okay i guess uh, with this let's come to the end of the session Well, uh, there are few more questions. Uh, one question came from Vasudev Joshi, and he asked, "How can plagiarism affect the core interests of research?" And would taking uh, some relevant points in the hypothesis be considered as plagiarism? See, it is very hard to comment on it, but uh, the basic uh, fundamental thing which you should remember is that whenever you are taking something. from any resource it is always always advisable to give acknowledgement to that reference in that case you will not fall into the ambit of plagiarism and you will not be counted as an academic misconduct category and secondly you uh, like you are saying can i include that in my hypothesis actually research is something new you are giving a new dimension to it you so it's always advisable to formulate your hypothesis with a new dimension you may take a, take an idea from the hypothesis being framed by others but since you are looking at the other aspect of that area it is always advisable to use it in your own words and with a new aspect okay uh, one more important question from kishni kaur she wanted to know like uh, is research paper and thesis uh, in sorry in research paper and thesis we give reference or bibliography uh, as you have mentioned what is the difference between two uh, i did mention it in my last session also i am happy to mention it again this session also see whenever we are using say i am using for producing a document i am using 20 documents i am uh, consulting referring to 20 documents and on the basis of those 20 documents i am producing and adding on to my uh, content so uh, i will be citing so from this document uh, as per this document the this aspect of uh, study has been studied like this okay so and on the end of it i will be producing the complete bibliographic details address of those documents at the end they are references but apart from these 20 references if i'll be using 
other uh, related references of other related literature also say 20 i have used in my article okay let me understand let, let please make me un uh, try to understand me i have used 20 documents these 20 i have given in my reference list but apart from this 20 i want to include 20 more though i have not read them i have not included them in my article i have not cited them in my article but i know they are also dealing with the same topic so i am just uh, suggesting my authors to you go to these 20. So in that case, I would not be naming my uh, ref uh, list of references as with the name references. I would name that uh, as bibliography. Bibliography. It is uh, its coverage is more. I I hope I am able to make it clarify. So uh, let uh, let us uh, let us just come to the end. Okay, there is a question I'm able to see. Uh, while someone is asking, should we give references or bibliography? It's entirely up to you. It's entirely it's up to you. There is no parameter that if you are giving references, uh, so the, uh, somebody would judge, oh, she has just given references, not giving any other uh, information apart from the, the ones she has used. Never mind. You, you just give references. And if, uh, bibliography, if you want to give, they, they, there is no such judging criteria. If what you want to give, it's entirely up to you. But if you have got some good reports and uh, you have not referred to them, but you want them to include, so it's always better to include for your readers. You give a bibliography. Bibliography and any day is more comprehensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess with this, let's come to the end of the session. And uh, I would uh, like to take this opportunity to thank our principal, sir, Dr. Anil Sardana who actually had to leave because of a uh, meeting in the university, Dr. Kalpana Gupta, Dr. Poonam Sharma, who is uh, the coordinator with us, uh, of course, Dr. Pujan Gulati, uh, and our dear colleagues. Um, thank you all for encouraging us to conduct the second webinar. The series of the webinar is decided on the basis of the feedback from received from uh, you all. So we understand the importance of research and definitely for the same we need to build a strong foundation. I hope we are able to serve the purpose and with this we come to the end of this session. Um, thank you all. Um, that's it. So First I of think, all, we, yeah, we would uh, like to thank Pooja Ma'am for such an insightful and enlightening session. Now before we end,